Hello, everybody. This is Roger from Grass Monkey Simulations. I hope you're doing very well today. Uh, I'm going to do a short flight, but it's just going to be an FAQ. But I am going to leave a link in the description for Rob from Dreams of Wings. He did a review for the All Metal Spitfire. And he's using the uh, 240 hertz puck. Uh, during the review and I could never demonstrate uh, just because of my frame rate issues I could never de it, he's got it nailed I mean the, what I see in his video is just amazing and plus he's just a great guy so be sure and check that out <clears throat> let's take off and then I'll I'll go over some FAQs We're in the Freedom Fox today. Parallel 42, Kip Fox. But, uh, yeah, I love this plane. I love the visibility. Okay. I think the most important uh, top of the list as far as FAQs go it would be uh, uh, privacy settings. I don't get it a lot, but it's it's really important. Um, if you start open track and uh, it won't detect your camera, it's because of your privacy settings. So just go to Windows and then Windows Settings, your Windows Start button, then Windows Settings, and then click on Privacy, then click on Camera, and then check the box that says Allow Apps to Access Your Camera, and you're good to go. Um, let's see, I made some notes here. Actually, mm. uh, light pollution. Occasionally, I'll get uh, emails from people saying it's jittery. Uh, it doesn't track the way they want it to track, and invariably, it's it's light pollution. They've either got the the wrong profile loaded sometimes. That doesn't happen very often. But uh, if you're trying to play DCS or Flight Simulator and you're using the default profile, you're going to have very unsatisfactory results because the default profile has very limited head movement. Um, for example, no matter how far you turn your head with a default profile, you're only going to see about that far right. You might get that far or this far left. Whereas with the flight sim profile, you know, I can look behind me, check my control surfaces. I can lean up and then look down the side of the aircraft. So, yeah, there's no comparison between the default profile and then the custom profiles that are made for their respective sims. That's not to say that... Uh, you can't use the same profile for many sims, but those, so the custom profiles are are tailored to uh, sims that have differences in them and as far as the way they process head tracking. Uh, IL-2 Sturmovic doesn't process head tracking the same way that DCS World does, and uh, Flight Sim doesn't process head tracking uh, flight sim and dcs are probably the two best sims um, for the implementation of uh, infrared head tracking um, x-plane definitely has to have its own as a matter of fact i've got two profiles for x-plane i've got uh, one for x-plane default and then another one for the x-cam x-cam x-camera plug-in and that's just that's a if you don't have any other plug-in for uh, X-Plane you need the X-Camera plug-in to uh, it, it really is an improvement over the default uh, plug-in that ships with uh, X-Plane 11 for uh, head tracking oh what else we got here 
Oh, light pollution, yeah. If you're head tracking, if it's erratic or, or jittery, you've probably got maybe a window and direct line of sight of the sensor and you're going to have to do something to mitigate that light whether you use uh, window blinds or blackout curtains but sunlight emits a tremendous amount of uh, infrared and your infrared uh, sensors obviously going to pick that up so you'll, you'll need to mitigate that incandescent uh, you know Hardly, I mean, there's not that many people that use incandescent uh, bulbs anymore. Uh, I like them still, but uh, they can emit uh, infrared. Whereas uh, directly behind me, I have, I don't know if they're lit up right now, but uh, I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five bright LED lights that are on almost all the time and they have absolutely no effect on my head tracking because uh, the sensor filters out that light but uh, yeah an incandescent bulb or what you might call the old timey screw in bulbs uh, that shatter if you look at them mean yeah those, those put out infrared alright what's next I may have to put some more eyes on for this. Calibration, yeah. Let's see. I don't know if I went over the difference between the Puck and the Odyssey. Uh, they both function exactly the same, except the Puck has a twist-on battery cover and the Odyssey has a snap-on cover. That's the only difference between the two. Ah, Velcro. Yeah, I've only had this. It's it happens very rarely, but it's completely avoidable. Uh, the Velcro that I use, like on my headphones now, the Velcro on this headband is not that old because every time I try to redesign the headband, uh, you know, I've got new Velcro on it. But the Velcro on my headphones is over two years old. And the reason it's over two years old is I'm going to freeze the view here so I can show you. So get autopilot, maintain altitude, hopefully. All right, we'll freeze the view there so I can show you what I'm talking about. Don't pull it apart. If you pull it apart like that, eventually, I'd say you're going to run a, a risk of pulling the glue apart. So. When you take these apart, just twist it. That's it. And like me, you know, you'll get, you should get years of service out of your Velcro if you just give it a twist as you pull it apart. Because if you just pull, you know, those hook and loop uh, attachments are fairly strong. And you run the risk of pulling the adhesive loose instead of the... Uh, disconnecting the hook and loop attachments. Uh, hot keys, you need hot keys for... I go over that in the tutorial. you got to have your hot keys. Uh, the smoothing filter. Uh, this is one that Rob brought up to me. He thought that like when he was just barely moving, if you can watch me now as I barely move my head, it's, it's, it's really smooth. No, it doesn't jitter. But he said he detected a little, what he called micro stutters. And what that was, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't a stutter. But at 240 hertz, that sensor picks up everything. And if you're moving your head very slowly, it's, it's picking up the tiniest movements from your head movement. And what you can do is go into open track, if that, you know, if, if you move your head slowly like that, but I, I figure in Rob's case, he was probably pointing it out in relation to uh, manipulating his the the switches on his dash. 
if you increase the smoothing on the 240 hertz sensor you can really crank that up because the sensor is so fast that it's got a lot of headroom on smoothing without introducing lag and lag is when uh when you turn your head left and when you turn your head left you have just to wait just a moment before the camera moves and that's awful that's a terrible experience so you don't want to introduce so much smoothing that it creates a delay in between your head movement and the camera um but yeah with the 240 hertz sensor you can really crank up the smoothing before you introduce lag and that will help you out on uh clicking your switches uh, or buttons or dials on the dash without having to use your toggle key to freeze see now i've used my toggle and now i've frozen my view so that it's easier for me to uh, work my my knobs and uh, rotaries etc but uh with increased smoothing you may not even have to use your toggle okay i over explained that one I, sensor location uh you don't have to mount the sensor on on your monitor now if you wear the sensor on uh, if you wear the uh IR unit on on your right side like I do then I've got my sensor mounted on the right side we go over that in the video but I don't think what I went over was that it doesn't have to be on your monitor it can be on your desktop of course you'll have to angle it up and if you and this is another this came up with Edson from parallel 42 um, he wears his on the left side just like he did when he had his track IR if you're going to wear your head tracker on the left side it's pre-calibrated for the right side so you'll just want to go into your settings and recalibrate that's it that'll take care of it same thing if you're going to mount your uh, uh, sensor on your desktop you'll want to recalibrate for that as well because it's 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 got a rough calibration it's calibrated for me and uh yeah so just recalibrate and uh, you won't have any problems if you mount it on your desktop or if you wear it on the left side and i think that's going to just about do it again i'm going to leave a link in the description to rob's video where he reviewed the spitfire it wasn't about the uh puck or the odyssey but that's what he's using he's using the 240 hertz uh version of the puck and it's it's just an amazing i wish i could make a video that that well but uh i don't know how he gets such a smooth frame rate uh maybe he's using shadow play i know i get better results with shadow play but uh i hate the uh microphone options so i don't and uh yeah i guess that's it and I'll see you guys later. Bye.